Thinking I'm living so wild and doubting my truth With greedy contempt, you will be consumed Back from the dead, my demons exhumed You only got enemies cause you lack empathy One for the pain to the dummy Forsaker, can you save us? I'm not a savior Fallen angel draw the line when you're dealing with some bullshit ass people you know what i mean people who are like going out their way to make their life hell and shit bro like definitely draw the line and shit but don't ever slight yourself and make yourself think that you some heartless ass person when you know better than that bro you know you big on talking to people you know you big on apologizing you know you big on hey we not on good terms right now but i'm a real enough nigga to let you know that i do miss you care about you bro and like i do hope you're doing good you know what i mean like don't don't ever let nobody else's bitterness turn you bitter, bro. You know what I mean? Like it's it and you know, but ha being able to work up to that capacity takes time and attention that you got to spend on yourself. You got to look inside of yourself because before you have that compassion for anybody outside, you got to have that for yourself, bro. Like I have the I have the co-star app on my phone, bro, and this motherfucker really be going crazy on the low. Like it's kind of <laughs> scary to come back, but. Real talk, bro. It told me like a couple weeks ago. It said it'll be much easier to be gentle with everyone else once you learn how to be gentle with yourself, bro. You you have to learn before you worry about. It was telling me in particular because this is a big issue I have having that Scorpio moon, bro. Because I'm spiteful, low key, bro. I'm very like, I'm not going to go seek revenge and ruin your life, but I'm going to sit and relish in the thought that I know that I can because I'm mad that you hurt me the way that you. You know what I mean, but. The key to all of that at the end of the day, though, is like I said, um, I tweeted it the other day. I'm probably not tripping, bro. You know, breaking down the situations I've been through and how I feel about them. I'm probably not tweaking, fam. I'm probably very right and very justified in feeling the way that I feel. I see you tweet that. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, bro, you got to let it go still, dude. You still got to let it go. Mm -hmm. You still got to be like, damn, that happened. All right, on the next, like, Sometimes motherfuckers just gonna have you fucked up, bro, and that's it. And that's it's not gonna things. be. Yeah, I'm so new to forgiveness, but like, bro, it's so bro. relieving. The fact that you even took the step. The fact that you even took the step. Huge, bro. There are people who are fucking fifty who don't forgive people, bro. We're in our twenties, fam. That's huge. You did yeah, a, you did a great thing. The way early, right, yeah, yeah. Real shit, bro. When you hit fifty, and you know you get to that stuck in my ways mentality and shit, bro, and you getting you getting old and stuff, and you in your prime for real, because people regard fifty as your real prime. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's when you at your perfect what you gonna be. You know what I mean? Your muscles are there, your brain's there, your financial literacy is there, like all of that, bro. People think fifty is the age. So why would I want to be fifty? Still mad at the motherfucker for some shit that he did when I was twenty three, bro? Yeah, yeah, fuck? no, that shit Even don't. I, that shit don't hold weight, bro. I said, don't hold away no more. Don't. Yeah. don't, bro. And on top of that, probably got babies and some more shit by that time, bro. Like, all yeah, right. like that energy that's misplaced. That's wasted energy at that point. Yeah, you got. And honestly, once you start looking at things like that, it's it's become way easier for me to do anything. Like, I I was when I was a kid, I was so ignorant to the point where I didn't believe that. Um, like changing your mindset will help anything. I kind of looked at it as like lying to yourself. I had to. It took me a long time and like maturing to learn the difference between the two, and I was like, yeah, and like once I did, is, once that once that clicked, like shit was lit. After that, I was like, okay, now I know how to nah, play the game. For sure. Now I know how to for play sure, the game. Like, it's funny you say that because, like, in a sense, your younger self wasn't exactly wrong. You weren't technically wrong, but like you weren't right. It was very like. You're not lying to yourself. Yeah, as I kind of pigeonhole the I kind of pigeonhole the idea or the, in the concept of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's very much so when you finally woke up to the idea of, okay, maybe I could think differently. Like it wasn't I'm gonna think differently just to shut these thoughts up and get it off my get it off my head until exactly. it's gone. I'm gonna change my thoughts so that I can literally focus on something that'll really actually serve me and like exactly. make, make me happy. But that just comes from like trying different about. things. That comes from trying to uh, yeah, meet like no. trial and area, going through different things. Like you just gotta you gotta get to what works for bro. you. Bro, what the what uh what Max say, bro? I'll be going through it, you just go around it, but it's really not that different when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Cause you still going through it. Man, still hey, hey, hold up. <laughs> oh, bro. 
You still trying to get to that point, bro? Yeah, Mac Miller. That, that nigga's gospel. Like, I need to like write his shit down in a sacred bro. text. Honestly, That's big fact. Like, bro, fucking. <laughs> Honestly, that lyric on Hurt Feelings, bro, was really deep as fuck. Because the album that's the B-side for Swimming is Circles, bro. I be going through it. You just go around it like a so circle. It goes. You know what I mean? And I'm a, I'm a huge it. fan of Full of Circles. But it's so crazy that that's... Oh, my God. I just had an epiphany mid, yeah. mid like, during this. What's well, good? That just helped my life. And I think that's going to help me finish writing this movie script. Because... Oh, really? I don't, okay, until this moment, I didn't know what closure was, but I, I'm over here talking about I'm such a full fan of full, such a fan of full circles, but that's what the closure is, because if it's a full circle, it's already closed, and that oh goes into God. forgiveness and letting go, like, that was just all, like, connected right there. That's beautiful, bro. And if I tell a little story that's real quick, it's, um, on my 18th good. birthday, I did a shroom trip, and okay. I went to go see Jurassic World, and it ended up raining. Yeah. So, like, um... So, but look, all of it was great though. Like, I know it sounds kind of crazy and like weird. All of it was great because it ended with me at a smoke session. And I kind of had the epiphany of, I was touching my hair and I was like, yo, I was new to having my locks. I was like, it kind of yeah. feels like my afros all stuck together. And then I had the epiphany of everything stuck together. And I was like, oh shit, everything in the world's like connected. Mm -hmm. And then like mm -hmm. that goes the full circle, the connection of everything. And then, like, ever since then, that's kind of just, like, been a big thing in my life, like, the full circle of things. Time is a circle. Time is a circle. It's not a finish line, bro. Yeah, it just is. It's, like, there's not was or future. It just exactly. is. Exactly. And all we have is right now. The life that we are living currently is nothing more than the amalgamation of a bunch of right now. Bro. Yeah. You're going to be able to grab air before you can grab time. Like, type shit. Like. Shit. shit, bro. Yeah. You, you can't. You can't. You, and that's why... You can't relish in the past too much, bro. Because, like, yeah, it sucked. Yeah, it was garbage. But, you know, you're not there anymore. In fact, you were never really there any time past the moment that it happened. Exactly. You were yeah. literally not in that situation any longer than the fucking 5, 10, 15 seconds in that moment actually existed. So once you start owning that and you accept that, bro, it's so easy to let go of all this shit and look at life as a comedy, my nigga. Like, I don't take much of anything personally. Anymore. It's definitely every single GTA. time. Facts, bro. It's definitely Everything GTA out here. Back. It's chilling. Come on, G. Everything is a respawn, low key, bro. Every, every day you wake up is a respawn, my nigga. That's what that is, bro. Mm -hmm. You, you got to do what you want to do with that. You want to get five stars, bro? Do that. But you want to be on the side of the game where you build a businesses and shit, and every single time you look at your money up in the top left corner and shit, bro, you got a couple mil because you built them businesses. And do that too. But, like, it's your life at the end of the day, bro, and that's what you want to do, and that's how you choose to express yourself because that makes you the most happy. That's all that matters, bro. And, you know, sometimes that results in some people in the world being disgusting, fucked up people. But... They have their place, bro. And that's the whole concept that As Above, So Below has taught me, bro. They're doing what they will, you know, do what thou wilt. Love under will, bro. Love is the only law. They're doing what they love to do. Yeah, bro. And they, and, but they, exactly, they lack the compassion to understand how what they love hurts somebody. Yes. So they're just doing what they want. And that's all they know. Let's, and let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because, like you just up. said, the, um, you said though even those people have their place and that's beloved so below. Cause I'm a yeah. big uh I struggle with balance. Okay. That's my biggest struggle. I'm a I'm a huge extremist and I have an addictive personality. So it's like um like your honesty, bro. Oh yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It just comes from observing observing myself a lot. But um so the fact that you say I don't, but I also want I also want everybody to be on a level, play, level playing field. But as you can see, I don't yeah. believe a level playing field even represents balance. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because then when you level the playing field, you got people that are different heights, different weight classes, different measures of strength. Some people can throw further than other people. Some people can't throw at all. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about leveling the playing field. It's about equipping the right tools to everybody that fit everybody's unique needs. You know what I mean? So it, it's like when it's I say the picture people, with the people trying to look out the window. 
Yeah, exactly. Thank you, bro. It's that's exactly the point that I was making. It's it's the difference between equality and equity. Equity is building on top of, of what is. Equality is making everything the same. So equity, let's take it in, into context with a home. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You build a home or you have a home. You buy a home, you rent to own or you own that bitch. You add a studio in that motherfucker, bro. You make an LLC and you write the studio space off and it's about 300 square feet, right? So now you get to you claim that. You've been watching me or something? Home. You say what? So you've been watching me or something? That's what, that's what we did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, bro. I, <laughs> trust me. I've been in. I, I, I no, I'm fucking with y'all. Fucking with you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You good? Um, just like, <laughs> like you know, when you write that shit off, bro, and you get it, you know, to where your home works for you. Now you have more value based upon what value you place inside of that studio. So, you know, say you got like ten thousand dollars worth of equipment in that bitch, but your mortgage, you know, yearly. Shit, give me like a ballpark number, bro. You know what I mean? 30, like, you know what I mean, like thirty thousand a year, you know, total, my nigga. You just added ten thousand dollars worth of value to your home, so you could still be paying your mortgage and then still writing off ten thousand dollars every fucking year. So now you're only paying twenty thousand a year because you have a ten thousand dollar prospect inside of your home That's the that you operate out of. That's the you know what I mean? The the, the game, the bro. The game, bro. Come on, G. Like. So I say that to say everything has its place because everything out here, and I mean everything, is a part of this big, disgusting, complicated, beautiful, depressing system, bro. Like it's all a part of the game, bro. Like I don't let's uh, think about it. Wouldn't it caution say he said I only respect stereo systems, nigga, not the system? Or is that Kirk Knight? (laughs) One of them niggas. I think that was Kirk. I think yeah. that was Kirk. Yeah, I think that was Kirk Knight. No, that's it. Yeah, bro. Like, it, you, everything has its place. So, like, you ever play Soul Calibur, bro? Mm-hmm. You were a fan of Taki at all? Damn. I don't know that character. Okay, so. You know, they switch up okay, the character so Taki, sometimes. Taki, Taki's the ninja chick with the tits. Got you. Yeah, so she said something very interesting in Soul Calibur 4 to Siegfried, you know, the man good guy, who, Mm -hmm. you know, turned into Nightmare and then separated himself, and then Nightmare manifested out of pure hatred for Siegfried because Soul has lost his perfect slave and shit, you know what I mean? So he had to make a new version of Siegfried that was basically like a figment, essentially. So Taki fights Siegfried as her final boss battle in Soul Calibur 4. When she beats Siegfried, Siegfried's like, what are you doing? I'm clearly the good guy. And she's like, I'm not denying that. But you got to realize after you accomplish your goal, you can't have the power that you possess either because it's just going to turn into evil. Good without the purpose of stopping evil just becomes more evil. And evil without the purpose of thwarting good just becomes boredom, which eventually becomes good by default because you don't want to do shit anymore. So there's nothing That's to do. a duality of it. I mean, you like... Everything needs itself, bro. And that goes into um I don't know if you've ever seen the Hunger Games series, but at the end of it, Katniss ends up she ends up killing the leader of the rebellion that she was fighting for the whole time and killing the president of the original oppressive government. So she like killed both sides of it to like set a like set a new so there could actually be some sort of exactly that literally happened. Um that literally happened at the end of uh, that Star Wars game where you get to create your dude and shit. Oh, like, okay. Has, okay. Like, the Awakened. Forget the. F- I- yeah, that one. Thank, thank you, bro. And um, he gets the fucking holocron cube, bro. And you know this is fucking something that Darth Vader, like the warmonger of outer space, is like thirsting for. You know what I mean? <laughs> Darth this nigga gets this so shit. sinister. This nigga gets this shit, bro. And breaks it, slashes it in half, and tells everybody, you know what? If those kids who are like the four chosen or all the chosen children who want to be chosen, let them be chosen. But I say, let them live their life. We don't need this thing. I don't want to turn them into Jedi. Because then, what if they didn't end up just like Vader? You know what I mean? Like, what if they turn into the Sith because they turn into a Jedi? They feel like they're better than everyone. Mm-hmm. That's because you can't like- put the fuck back on the phone. 
my type of shit, bro. Like, so there's there's a lot of so there's a lot of references to that in fiction. Cause like um another another one would be I heard that at the end of Legend of Korra, like she like severed the avatar um the yep. avatar link she or whatever. Severed the energy. Yeah, severed so the like there would never be another avatar people. to kind of like end that eternal struggle of like the good and evil. Cause as long as that stance of good is always there, is always gonna be that evil. I wonder how my heroes go in. Hmm. Bro. <laughs> Interesting. Oh my god. First of all, Deku finna be that nigga. We don't want to say it, but it's true. I don't want to say um, it. You don't. I mean, because like I get what people say when they're like, oh, he's such a crybaby. His character growth didn't go anywhere. He just got stronger. And it's like, that's cool. But I agree. He's smart. Like, he I will like... give him that. My nigga's smart as hell. Like, you can't, you can't get shit by my nigga. At all. You can't get shit at by all, him. Bro. So I fuck Deku, with him for that. Deku's... Deku, that nigga in real life, bro, I just don't like the fact that they, like, kept his character trope as, like, the crybaby little boy with a yeah, whole Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, Be like, I need to see a little bit of Naruto in you. I don't need to see all that. Bro, like, I need to see a little bit of Naruto This nigga's an off niggas, bro. He didn't, he's off people, bro. Like, he doesn't need to be the crybaby anymore, bro. He's killed people. Like, you don't, come on, G. Like, he doesn't see, need to See, that makes you that. become a different he, nigga, he, but, like. You know what I mean? I feel like what's going to change him friends, is, bro. what's going to change him is losing allies. That's going to change him. Facts. I think if under the circumstance, and this is just a big what if, because I'm not super caught up with my hero right now. I'm not either. I'm not either. I feel like I feel like the biggest thing that would ever give him the most character growth is if Bakugo became a villain. And he no longer had that rivalry of number one and number two anymore. Mm -hmm. And it became him and Todoroki kicking it. Because then it would be Bakugo would be like, you know, of course he would get dumb strong, because I'm sure that one of them niggas on the evil side would do something to that nigga and like fuck him up the same way they did Shigaraki. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that just... nigga's wild. Shigaraki's hard. Bro. I'll fuck with him. That nigga's oh wild. my God. I When I saw what the fuck they did with him, I was like, bro, they turned him into a Nomu? Bro, what? I was like, the fact that his ability is now no longer, he doesn't have to touch you. It's if you're around him, you die. That's why, because I didn't even know What that. the fuck, bro? If he activates his power and you are within a radius of him, you die. You do not. You do not. You don't get a choice, bro. And you and you evaporate. You crumble. You you like crumble into nothing, bro. It's yeah. not even. It's like you get sick like a little bit. Shattered, and you stick, it's bro. Like getting shattered if you're Medusa type shit. Like you just literally, you bro. If you put all crazy. five fingers on anything, that's wild, bro. But yeah, G, like you know, shit, tying it into the point we making, bro. Shit, dude, like Deku would not be Deku if Shigaraki didn't exist. You know what I mean? Facts. Dobby would not Dobby would not be Dobby had Endeavor not abused him and Todoroki when they were kids. You know what I mean? Like, shit, all for one wouldn't have been who he was without one for all, bro. Like, that's that, that's that's a fact, bro. But yeah. you need the villains, bro. You need Still the bad guys. Constant, because constant that constant balance. The guys yeah. They give each other purpose. Because if you don't have anything to combat and the world is a perfect place, allegedly, and stuff, what's the purpose of doing all this good just to keep everybody happy? That's assuming that's what happy looks like for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, some people, and you know, I, I, I don't recant these words, but I do repent for what I'm about to say. Some people get off on shooting people in the fucking face, bro, and that's fucked up, but... Some people, that's how they like to live, my nigga. Like, like it on Batman. Some people just want to watch the world burn. That's it, bro. Joker, come on, dog. That is literally some people in this world. Joker is like the B representation of the chaotic neutral. It doesn't want good. It doesn't want bad. It just wants chaos. chaos. And you For can't have chaos. like. <laughs> bro, be wild. He might need to be exterminated. Bro, Jokers needed to die for a long time. Bro. Yeah, can, but like he, Batman's he, too scared of himself. We need to start talking about it. But I will, bro, I will Batman, get to that. Batman is terrified of himself, bro, because he knows if he kills Joker, bro, he's gonna kill the rest of the villains, and then he's gonna become just like Joker. He knows it, bro. He knows it. He's been, he's been, he's been telling everybody that if you kill someone, there's one, there's still the same amount of killers in the world. You know what I mean? Like he tells everybody that, and that's why he doesn't kill Joker, and that's why Joker taunts him all the time because he's, he's like. It's ha- It's like it's not about to kill all the villains. Pussy, kill itself. Yeah, facts, bro. Because it wouldn't. It's not about Batman being pussy, bro. Joker knows Batman would kill him, bro. He knows that, bro. But that's why he know he does what he does because he knows he won't. Because he's like, 
you don't want to become like me and lose your mind because you got PTSD just as bad as I do. Like, that's the whole thing about Joker and Batman. They the same nigga, bro. They the same motherfucker, bro. You just, they they manifested their traumas in different ways, bro. And that goes and back to the, you, to the Mac Miller topic that you said. That you exactly. said uh, it really ain't that different when you think about it. It's not, bro. I be going through it. You just go around it. The dichotomy you know I mean? of love and hate, good and evil. Exactly. Like, yeah. And that's what's crazy, bro. Batman went around it. Batman didn't go through it at all. In fact, he fights thoughts of his fucking parents dying every fucking day. He's old as shit. You know what I mean? He didn't get through it, my nigga. He went around it. Joker went through it. Be and cool. Batman got, Batman got PTSD. Extreme PTSD. <laughs> Oh, super CPTSD, bro. He's like super fucked up, dude. Like he's not at all, all the nah, way there on a mental level, bro. Different adult had he not went through that. Like he, that altered his whole path. Uh, he would have been a fucking pampered pretty boy, bro. He wouldn't have been worried about becoming the strongest human alive. He wouldn't have worried about martial arts. He wouldn't have worried about creating fucking the Batcave and shit, bro. Like none of that. He would have been the next benefactor of. Fucking, you know, Wayne Technologies, whatever the fuck that company's called, and yeah. that would have been it. He would have been a rich ass nigga that would have been corrupt, just like his dad, bro. So that's what you gotta realize. Could have been Iron Man. Could have been Iron Man. Exactly, but then he would have been evil like his dad, because his dad wasn't nothing but a powerful ass motherfucker, bro. His dad didn't do shit for the community. In fact, he took from the community just to make sure his son had a good life. And that's why Bruce tries to go out of his way to do little shit, but even then. Bruce can't do much because he don't even go to the hood like that, bro. Bruce Wayne don't go to the hood and tell motherfuckers, hey, here's like 100000 to rebuild your block. No, he sits in that nice-ass building in his nice-ass mansion in his beautiful-ass office with his sexy-ass assistant and his liquor and his fucking, his butler, goddammit. Like, he, come on, bro. He yeah. very much so is who he is by, by birthright. He was born into the fucking Wayne fortune. And, you it's know, not- Nobody listening, this is still on topic because yeah, it, is. Facts. it goes into what happiness is for everyone and so and, like what know, certain people get off on and it, if good is good and if evil is evil and the dichotomy of the two because Batman is regarded as a hero but like you just said Batman has the power to do way more yet the buck stops there exactly and Batman has the power to be the ultimate evil He's the he's the most successful person in. And do you think that's an ego thing? Yes, yes, I do. It's like, think about it, bro. It's like, what the fuck has he done for the poor, bro? What has he done for the poor one damn time, bro? Besides save them from getting killed by a lunatic that should be locked up in Arkham, but somehow keeps getting out, even though he knows these lunatics are gonna keep getting out, bro. He knows they're gonna escape, bro. He's locked up Joker how many times? Every time Joker goes into fucking Arkham Asylum, he's treated like a king. Every single time, bro. And formulates a bigger plot to get out. And by the time he gets out, comes home to millions, comes home to more henchmen, comes home to more guns, a bigger operation, a stronger a new suit. ally. A, a new suit, my nigga. You know what I mean? Like, new makeup, bro. Like, Joker comes home to whatever the fuck he wants, bro, because Batman knows he's about to get out. It's all ego, bro, because Batman knows he could have broke that nigga neck at any point, bro. He could have shattered that nigga's windpipe easily. That is a frail old man, bro, who has a little bit of fight knowledge, my nigga, and he's just crazy enough to not die. You could have snapped his neck like any other fucking villain, bro, easily, but you haven't because you need to feed your own ego because Batman needs a purpose. Come on, bro. Come on. What the fuck is Batman out here doing if Joker's dead, bro? The rest of these niggas are working for Joker. You know what I mean? They're doing their own shit, but they're all Joker's partners. Come on, bro. It's 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 very in the it's in the pudding, bro. Everybody doesn't understand that. It's like you know, yeah, Batman's a good guy inherently because he's doing a good thing by like saving a couple people. But like, what saving ten people to the hundred thousand that Joker just killed because you because he knows you ain't gonna come kill him for doing it. Yeah, and what's Gotham to the world? Come on, bro. Nobody gives a fuck about Gotham, bro. Every time anybody talked about Gotham City. Oh, yeah, my Gotham God. really does not want to ask. I would never want to live there. Bro, think about it. The politicians, the hood is worse than the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, the good it, part it's is... All bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. Hey, bro. You, but it's, it's, it's due to... It, it all to, has um, to... Mm-hmm. It's due to Bruce's dad. But I do want to get into... Uh, I do got two questions from some fans. 
Okay. So, one, um, you kind of answered it earlier, but I'm going to ask it again. Why you take so long to drop? Because I make timeless music. Keeping it real. Um, I take so long to drop music because I see myself in leagues with people like Kendrick Abso and Earl Sweatshirt and Lupe. You know, I genuinely feel like if I hopped on a record with some niggas, it would definitely be debatable. It would be like you could hear me on a song and I wouldn't get drowned out by any of those guys. It would be, holy fuck, what is this guy saying some crazy shit? You know what I mean? Like, the words that I'm saying are very much so, like, heavy. And, like, I try to make sure that, like, when I drop some shit, it sits with you for a minute. Corona's three years old and it has the most streams out of any song that I've ever dropped, bro. People are still talking about that song. Because the way you came on that shit that ever since the shorty, I was sipping on the 40 writing stories for the people inside of the board tour. I was like, oh, this nigga Floyd. I said, and this shit hard. Like, Come on, bro. Like, I, I'm, I'm aware of, I'm aware of my capacity to write. I know what I'm putting on paper, bro, and I know. So it's just like a quality. insurance of the quality of the music, making sure everything yeah, looks yeah. apart. I take so long because when I'm working on the product itself, I'm, I, I'll sit and I'll mix a song like five or six times before I drop it, bro. Okay, Maybe so more. You than that. yourself. Oh no, 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 no! I don't. But again, that goes back to the composing. You know got you, I mean? like, got you. Sitting, okay, all right. You'll be like, okay, I want this though. to sound like this. This part here is a little off. Can we do this here? Let me add another we, layer on can that. We turn, can we turn up the lows on this part? Can we turn up the high part on this? Can the so do you like stuff? to, um, are you are you doing that um, rigorously? Are you the type of person who like to record something and then live with it with a little, for a little bit and then come back to it? A mixture of both, bro. It's like, I'll, I'll record it so it's out. So it's on there and it's on wax, you know what I mean? And I can sit there and digest the whole thing and really feel how I feel about it. But then when I do hear what I would like different, I'm very big on hitting my instrument. Like, hey, yo, can we can we turn this down? Can we turn this up? Hey, actually, get me in there. I want to add this to it. Um, Actually, my bro finna slide through. He's finna add a solo to this. Like, I, I'm very, very big on making sure that it comes out exactly how the fuck it sounded in my head, bro. Me too, me too. That's why, that's why I want to make sure every time I drop, it's as potent as I tell people it's going to be. And that's why I'm happy my product being received so well because people waited five, six years, bro. You know, people don't even really know like that that I dropped Cardinal on SoundCloud. That's a project. You can go listen to that if you want a project from me, technically. But this is my first major release. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I made sure that when I dropped this shit, every single record was going to hit like something you have never heard from the city of Indianapolis ever, bro. Like, I want to make sure it is something that you listen to two years down the line and you're like, bro, that was a whole moment. That nigga really like came through and dropped a project that was just as good as he told us it was going to be. We waited hell alone. And I played that bitch three or four times back, like back to back. And I love it. You know what I mean? Like I mean, I know what I'm about to do. And that's why I take so long. Take typically. Other times I'll be broke because that shit's expensive and I don't have my own equipment. So, oh man, like, hey, yeah. you, you, yep. to my nigga. I'm gonna know how that is. I've been there. I go, I go through that consistently. Luckily, yeah, like, bro. luckily with me and T Rose being innocent together, it's it, it's been easy for us to to build and collaborate on on putting on building Ratchet Studios as an actual entity. But um, no another, problem, the next question is about Fallen Angel. What did you see that helped okay. you maneuver through this life of sin? First you, of all, I don't know who asked that, but that's a beautiful question. Because you mentioned that you find, you know what I'm saying? You you know what I'm in reference yeah. to. Yeah. I found so, uh, my, just give the give the line for, for people listening and then the, uh, go into the question. Um I said I finally see what I need to maneuver through this life of sin. I fell to my knees to peruse these illusions when my sight was dim. I had to believe and be ready to receive it despite my sin. I believe like a pen when I write my wrongs to hurt you, maybe just like them. But can you please help me find my friend? My friend is me. You know what I mean? I wasn't talking about anybody else. I was talking about myself. I lost myself. And that's why the hook is the way that it is. You know what I mean? It's forsaken. I didn't with those lines so much. That line, you know what I mean? I like it's very much so lines. like, look. I, it, I'm talking about myself. I lost myself. I almost lost my soul on the way up. You know what I mean? Like, rain go away. I'm talking about being at a summit, bro. You know, Kyron's arrow, track five, is my ego at the summit. So 
but then track six, Fallen Angel, I'm falling off of the summit, bro. I am at the top, but I'm falling, bro, and it hurts. You know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, I never thought I would, but I got to accept the fact that I'm falling, bro. I got to accept the fact that I'm failing. What I saw that really helped me maneuver through all this bullshit, bro, and, like, all this shit that I was going through when I was young and, like, you know, all my mistakes when I was younger was really just... I had to accept the fact that I was not perfect, no matter how hard I would try to tell anybody otherwise, bro. Like, I wanted to tell everyone so desperately how, oh, I don't hurt people. I don't fuck up. I can never do no wrong. I can never fuck nobody over, you know what I mean? And it's like, I ain't fuck nobody over. Like, I definitely did some slimy ass shit in my life, bro, that I look back and I'm like, bro, that's weird old behavior. I'll probably just beat somebody ass for doing that, you know what I mean? Like, been definitely moved that way a couple times in my lifetime, bro. And it was all during the time when I didn't know better. And it was, you know, that's why the first line of Fallen Angel on the verse is, you know, embracing imperfection and counting every blessing, bro. It's you, I, I had to deal with the fact that I wasn't perfect anymore, bro. Because, like, a lot of my big issue when I was younger, when I first got into this rap shit, is I had a God complex, bro. I was aware that I rap better than everybody. I was hearing, I heard niggas, bro. I wasn't deaf. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was listening to my peers, bro. I was listening to my peers <laughs> actively, bro, like, every single day would, like, listen to these niggas' music because I wanted to listen. And it wasn't even from a place of, how can I shit on this nigga today? It was very, yeah, how yeah. do I support, bro? How do I listen to his shit? You know what I mean? Exactly. I want to hear him. And I was That's listening always, to everybody. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to everybody, bro. Top to bottom projects telling people, hey, bro, this is my favorite track on this project. It'll be the song they promoted the leak. You know what I'm saying? A, a real avid listener. But I wasn't getting that same type of love in return, first of all. Second, I realized that, you know, this is why people treat me the way that they treat me, bro. Because, like, regardless of how they feel about me as an individual, bro, I am at the top, my nigga. I am at the top, bro. I dropped my first project this year, bro. My first, my nigga. And I'm doing way crazier than almost all of my peers right now. And like you said, you already mentioned how booked you were last year before even having a project up. Like, you can get people to come out. You can get people to come out without having a project. That's enough right there. Speaks for what you got going on. Oh, bro, what else do I... What else can I say, bro? Niggas can have 13 projects out and and can't do a show. Not to to tell nobody to shed the light on what you doing. Come on, bro. It's niggas making millions of streams that can't do shows like I do, bro. Like, because niggas ain't trying to hear them like that. And I know that I have that type of pool, bro, because my fans are real, bro. You know what I'm saying? My fans are real. My interactions are real. Most of the people who listen to me have shaken my hand, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's heavy shit. I had to really, like, like, imagine what the fuck this year would have been like had COVID not hit, bro. I was planning on going way crazier than I had to this year, bro. Like, it, wow. like this shit was going to be up, bro. Very up. And I had big plans, but, you know, I had to sit down and figure out another way to approach it. And in the midst of doing that and dealing with the pandemic, 2020, you know what I mean? I feel like this was the year of vision, bro. It made everybody see a bunch of shit that they didn't want to see. But, you know, regardless of you not wanting to see it, excuse me, you had to accept it. You know what I'm saying? And I saw a lot of really ugly sides of myself. You know what I mean? Like, I was dealing with people and bringing all this random energy into my house and shit when I was in my apartment before I moved out and all that. You know what I mean? Just a lot of really ugly-ass, random-ass energy. Most of that energy from the past and shit. You know what I mean? People who don't deserve to deal with me anymore. That I tried to, like, bring back into my life on some cool shit and be on some, oh, yeah, we can still be friends. It's all good. Like, yeah, all, all that shit's old shit. And it's like, bro, you can't go back to no old motherfucker expecting some new shit, bro. Especially if you see that they've been the same way that they were where you when you left them, my nigga. Like, that's not, that's not smart. That's self-sabotage. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Like, a lot of people I, look at I, it I, like, well, that was like, however yeah. long ago it was. Like, I've grown, yeah, like, dude. people change. No, bro, but like, not everybody just, grows as, uh, on the, at the same, the same amount. So it's like, that may have been a long time for you, but they may still be closer to that place than you realize. Big facts, bro. And like, honestly, if you bring place. it up, they probably still hurt. You know what I mean? You bring it up, you probably still hurt by it. And that's why you can't trust that they've changed it all. Exactly. They still harbor those emotions towards you. You probably don't. You'll probably give them a, a genuine apology because you're mature and mm-hmm. you'll, you know, look, I realize I fucked up. That was some fuck shit back then. My bad. You know, that's on me. I don't expect you to take responsibility for my actions. I don't want you to fix it either. Though. So I want to try to amend what I can amend and let you know that like, hey, I am aware that I fucked up. 
at least doing that is important, bro. And, you know, telling people you got to, man, and this ties back into the life of sin thing, bro. It's like, you have to be able to realize when something is for you, you don't have to chase it, bro. Like, it's not going to, you're not going to chase it when it's yours, bro. You don't have to chase something when it's yours. I was chasing this rap shit for so long thinking, oh, man, I don't want to get replaced, bro. I don't want somebody to come out and do what I do better than I do it and, like, you know, be a new me if I don't drop soon enough. And, like, I was dealing with real life in the midst of me trying to rap, though. And it was like, damn, but fuck, I, I got a therapy session on Monday, bro. My fucking ex pissing me off, you know what I mean? I got this new bitch that I don't fuck with it all the way that I thought I really liked this shit, but she on bullshit. Like, this real life hitting, bro. You got bills, your car with them broke down, you trying to spend money on parts and shit, like this, you fucked up, bro, but you trying to do what you really know you genuinely love to do, and moreover, what yeah. people love for you to do, and it's fucking with your spirit, because you just like, do I deserve to do this right now? Absolutely. fucking lutely In fact, that's your calling. That's what you need to be doing, because it's going to make all that other shit make sense. But not you know even, what I mean? Not My even life more, got better. Not even more so chasing, but like, you don't have to force what's going to be for you. You just got to not wait, you got to prepare and be ready because like what they say, uh, luck is when preparation meets timing. So you got to like definitely work and be ready for what you know you want to do, but like you're never going to have to force it if it's for you. It's going to happen in the time that it's meant to happen. Just like you said exactly. earlier with when um, it happens, picking the right time to drop your project. Yeah, bro. When it happens, you'll know that you're ready. Like I said earlier, like when some shit is like being presented to you, it's because you are ready for that thing. Exactly. It is here because it's I love it's how full your, circle conversation been. You know what I mean? Like it's and that's that my friend is the art of a good interview. But um <laughs> yeah dude like just I, I I had to realize bro that I'm not gonna be stuck in this fucked up position where I'm like down on myself and feeling guilty and feeling ashamed and feeling disgusting and stuff bro like I, I had a really weird upbringing, bro, and that'll be another convo over a blunt and some drinks or something one day, bro. But, like, you know, my, my life was very weird when I was a kid, bro. Like, you know, I'm talking, like, drugs, molestation, and some more shit, bro. Like, shit was weird, bro. Very weird. It made me a really weird little kid. I didn't bro. really know what the fuck to do out here. So I was like, damn, you know what I mean? I was just trying to make friends. I ain't know all the shit that I was doing was all that shit. I don't fuck with that. You know what I mean? Like, and then I'm sitting here and I realize, you know, Becoming aware, my mm -hmm. eyes are open now, and I'm like feeling down on myself because I ain't want to hurt nobody. But I feel like I you kind of like, have to fuck up to wake up. To a sense, you, you kind of gotta like, you kind of have do, to bro. go through that to get to that point. Because how, bro? Because you can't run you know? from it. You gotta gotta like, you gotta you gotta deal with it. Whether you go through it or go around it, you gotta deal with it. Real shit. And then that'll mm -hmm. lead you to waking up at exactly. your timing. Yeah. And when you're when you're accepting and you're open of that and you receive it, bro, it doesn't hurt as bad. You know what I mean? It, and because that was a big thing with me, I didn't want to receive it because I didn't want to feel that type of pain. You know what I mean? I didn't want to process that type of shit. I was like, ah, oh, bro, I guess I'm just gonna sit with all these shitty emotions and just kind of like be here and like in the moment, just, you know, when I need, not even in the moment, but like really shit in the past and in the future. I'm not even gonna worry about right now because all I'm thinking about is some shit that I did like five years ago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I always tell like people. When I was very to... no, go ahead. I won't. I won't cut you off. Oh, you're you're good. Because I, I really want to hear your point, bro. Because you've been you be snapping high key. But like, <laughs> I was just... really um recently what I've been telling people probably for like the past years. I'm never satisfied because I constantly live in the past and the future, like constantly. I'm always like, damn That's shit. It shit was lit back when or like shit gonna be lit when uh, when i can like make yeah. now lit and like once i realized that it kind of just Ooh. a lot of my stress went away and i was able to appreciate things more just go back to rule 32 like enjoy the little things like every step real talk and realization is is a step toward forward to where i want to be to who i want to be actually i got That's this line where i say um where i say i always knew just who i was now i know who i'm is and it's kind of just like reflecting mm -hmm. on who I felt like I was throughout my time, who I thought I was back in that moment, who I thought, who yeah. I think of, who that person is now, and just like yeah. the understanding of like the differences and how I grow, and like that's that shit. Facts, bro. That's just weird. That's really a hard ass line, Suzy. For real, <laughs> like it's it, 
it's crazy, bro, because you you'll get so caught up in who you were, bro. And you know, you gotta take the language literally when you speak them kind of words over yourself. Because when you say was all the time, you're dragging yourself back to that shit, bro. It's you're dragging yourself back to that frequency that you left already. And that's why you're sad. Mm-hmm. Because it's not that you missed it, it's because you know that you have better shit in front of you, but now you feel like you're wasting your future that's not here yet. Exactly. So when you're in the past, you're simultaneously in the future. But when you're in the future, you're stuck in the past because your life right now is not what you want it to be. You know what I mean? So just mm-hmm. when you're not even focused right on making right now what you want it to be. Get right here, bro. Go ass down, G. Be yeah. still. That's one thing be I had still. to realize, and that shit helped me so right, much. Bro. Be still, bro. I had to be able to receive it, bro. Like that's the thing. I can't take nothing from nothing, bro. If I'm moving all the damn time, bro. Fucking Marvin Crab. On uh, the Tunnel's End, his EP he dropped before his uh, the Fun House project he dropped. Mm-hmm. He had an interlude on there from some old black dude he was speaking to, where a dude said, listen, young man, everyone Just is Just one always second. Wrong. I really hate to do this. Hold on. I have to pause this. You good. All oh, right, we back. You was talking about the, uh, the Marlon Crowd project? Yeah, so there is, um, you know... It to tie into the what I saw to maneuver through life to like finally like you know get to the point that I needed to get to to get to the next level because mm-hmm. that's ultimately all life is it's a series of first steps bro that's all it is and um on the project bro there was there was a really wise old man I wish Marlon like cited who he was I think he did and if he did I'll go look it up and tell you later but, okay. Um, dude was snapping on the interludes where he was like, you know, just sounded like this old coot. Like his voice sounded like this, young man. Like you know, just very, very, a lot of yeah, a lot of character and shit, bro. But like okay. he was talking that shit to him. You know what I mean? It was like very much so. Some you would need to hear from like your like, uncle and your grandfather. Like, uh, you me and, like an OG. He, he, facts, bro. He was like, look. So the issue with you young people is you hop on trains and you don't even know where the train is headed. And then when you get on the train, you want to get off the train. Young man, you can't change directions until you stop. Mm. Bro. Bro. Mm. Bro. Okay. You can't change directions until you stop. My nigga. Yeah, that hit you it can't stop fucking up until you stop fucking up, bro. You have to take ownership of the fact that you're fucking up. And you have yeah. to stop doing it and then see where you would rather be. You know what I mean? I had to do that on the deepest level, personally, bro. Like, I got motherfuckers mad at me still about shit that I didn't forgave myself for. You know what I mean? But oh yeah, I forgave myself for me, bro. Yeah, you, you gotta know, move I on get, from I, that. I, yeah, yeah, definitely. I had to do this shit because I wanted to move forward. I wanted to live life. I can't live life being sorry for you. You know what I mean? Because now I'm not about to fucking bear your angst and your upsetness that you have with me and shit. Yes. We finna motherfucking get past this shit and move past it and be done with it, bro. Because I don't want to fucking harbor on that. Yeah. I don't hate you. Yep. There's I've nothing worth hating I in this can world. I can to try to make shit right with you. And I've like gotten through it myself. I can't keep holding on to it because you feel like you can't forgive me for what I've done. I got to. Big facts, bro. Yeah. Got to keep, gonna hold keep me going, down. man. Because there's somebody on the other side of that who was a blessing to me that I need to meet and be a better version for. And when I meet them, bro, I'll be ready because I dealt with this shit here. And when I get over that hump, I'll be cool because I'm able to receive it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm able to receive that because I made space. I made space. I don't have room for that. You know what I mean? I, I had to make room. I had to get my mind out the gutter. I had to reach into my own brain, bro, and literally pull shit out of my brain that was like, like I'm talking like literally days, bro, I think back to have extremely triggering, and I mean extremely on the most gruesome level, bro. Super triggering PTSD flashbacks, bro, where I would literally lay in bed at like 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, bro, and just think about some really fucked up abuse that I went through when I was a little kid, you know what I mean? And how every time I tried to tell somebody, everybody was just like, oh, you just getting disciplined. Oh, you're a little boy, stop crying, you know what I mean? Oh, don't worry about that, you over here worried about the wrong shit. I, oh, uh, you know, all all kind of stuff, bro. Like I'll think about everything. I'll think about the fights my mom used to get into with my first step dad. I'll think about me and my cousins fighting. I'll think about getting bullied. Like I'll literally lay there and I had to sit 
with all of that shit, bro, and really sit there and process it and understand why the fuck I went through it. Because that's the only thing PTSD really is. It's your brain trying to figure out why the fuck you went through something. Mm -hmm. Because it hurts still. You know what I mean? And then when you finally sit there and realize, damn, I went through all that because this, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all that was preparing me for this shit. Do you think that comes from people? I can deal with all that. Do you think that comes from people um, feeling like they don't deserve what they went through? Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that can? Um, Do you think that can reinforce the trauma, like having that mindset? It depends on the circumstance, but typically, yes, I would say yeah, bro, because. When you, oof, boy, that's that's deep, bro. Like when yeah. you go through shit, bro. Everybody likes to feel like, poor me, why me? Oh you know yeah, yeah. I mean? It's definitely circumstantial when it comes to that. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And it's always like, why me? And it's not, what is this teaching me? It's not why is it happening to me. It's what is this here for? What am what am I learning exactly. this lesson for? You know what I mean? People exactly. don't like to look at it that way because it hurts, and they're like. Well, damn, bro. How do I even? How do I even deal with this? I ain't never been through no shit like this. That was the exact same thought you had when you went through everything you went through. You, you never been through everything. nothing until you go through it. Exactly, bro. You won't know what you're dealing with until you experience it. That's what I always tell you people. They like, um, like usually when I'm talking to people and I'm trying to introduce them to somebody or like invite them somewhere, where it's like group people, people, group people they don't know. They're like, well, I don't know them. I'm like, you're never gonna know them unless you meet them. Like, come on, come on, bro. You're never gonna know him with that mindset. Like, I didn't know when I came to y'all New Year's party, bro. I knew a couple of familiar faces that I knew back from Pike, but other than that, my nigga, you saw me in that bitch where I was swinging through that hoe. I was meeting people, talking. Hey, to I knew your social was lit last bro. year. I ain't gonna hold. That shit was it was, it was up, bro. It was up as fuck. I was like, gee, this is cool as hell. And I walked in there. Nervous at first, bro, because I was like, oh, no, nobody. Oh, there's Gigi. Oh, there's Marcus. Oh, shit, Malcolm. Like, you know, saw Jalen, saw everybody, saw T Rose on the boards. And I was like, okay, cool. So I am in a, in a, in a cool setting. I'm good. You know what I mean? Definitely. And when I got from my, with my anchor point, I was like, let's go meet other people because I can just swing through the party and sit next to the DJ and drink. I can go talk to Malcolm about hip hop. You know what I mean? I can go talk to Marcus about smoking a good ass joint or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. You know what I mean? And I I, I, I had to get comfortable that I was in a new environment because new doesn't have to be scary. You know what I mean? Yes. People associate new and the unknown with fear. Mm-hmm. No, new is just new. You could go walk up to a grizzly bear right now and you have like a 50-50 chance of either that thing befriending you and protecting you from shit or mulling you. You know what I mean? Like you don't know. But you won't know until you get into that situation. And mm-hmm. that situation depends on circumstance. <laughs> That's a risky you know yeah, situation, cool. too. But, yeah, I feel you. I see what you but, said. Yeah. No, nah, real shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Real shit. Like, it's like you could walk up to this bear and it could be hungry. Walking up to a hungry bear is probably not smart. But, you know, <laughs> that doesn't guarantee you're going to die or nothing. Yes. But there's a chance. But, you know what I mean, you could also have some berries or something that, that this bear in particular fucks with. Maybe this bear, you don't even know, but in the wild, this particular bear you just met doesn't even like eating fish like that. Not because it doesn't care about hurting fish and shit, but like, mm-hmm. it prefers berries and twigs and grass and stuff. You know what I mean? They're omnivores. So, maybe this bear just wants your fucking trail mix, bro, and they'll follow you around the whole trip and then like fight people for you and shit. You don't know, bro. You don't even fucking know. You never know. Like, life takes a lot of interesting turns, bro. That's a fact. Like, motherfucking wild animals befriend random humans all the time just for helping them out, just for feeding them. Like, we'll come around for the rest of that human's life or, or for the rest of their life. Yeah, the and domestication of canines will always fascinate me. Facts, bro. That shit will always facts, fascinate bro. me. Like, I don't, like... Because, like, I'm nigga? really... Huh? Wolves, bro. Bro, like what? What the fuck? Who said hey, no, bro, bro, bring him in here? Yeah, that's my nigga. That's my nigga Tito. Like he cool. <laughs> like, like that's sit down. Cool, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, no, bro, I'm like, good, yeah. bro. Like that's wild to me. It's it's a it's a funny thought, bro. Because it's like you know you 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 never know till you know, and you know tying it all back to the life of sin question is 
you never know till you know. And I didn't know until I committed a bunch of fucking sins, bro. And I'm just like, damn, dude, that's shitty. I didn't even know what I was doing was wrong. In fact, what's worse is I'm a kid and the people that I'm kicking it around are adults technically. And they're not telling me that I'm doing wrong at all. In fact, they're reinforcing it. That's fucked up, bro. Because then when you get lost in the sauce and then you lost in the sauce by yourself, them same adults going to be like, oh, well, got to bump your head, kid. Like, oh, well, you shouldn't have been doing that. It's like, nigga, I learned it from you. Like, what? what? Like, what you mean? And that's how niggas be getting in the jam and locked up in some more shit, bro. Mm -hmm. All behind a nigga that was like, well, I didn't tell you to do that. But like, nah, bro, you got to take responsibility for shit, bro. Because you were always either the good seed or the bad seed in somebody's subconscious mind, bro. Plant good seeds. That's all you got to do. Make sure that every time you meet somebody, you're planting a good seed leaving a good memory even if it's somebody you're never gonna see again bro like literally like i've talked to random people in the grocery store when they're shopping for particular ingredients like i was in the grocery store grabbing ingredients for my smoothies and shit dude like there was this random couple they had a bunch of like crab legs and shrimp and shit in their cart and i'm like oh y'all about to make like a seafood boil because i saw them grab the red potatoes and shit i'm like Hey yo, you know it'd be really fire for your for your for your seasoning for your vegetables and stuff they'd be like no nah, what's up i'm like Y'all got pink Himalayan salt or sea salt? They're like, yeah. So I'm like, take some lemon, take some Cajun or some uh, cayenne pepper, and like add that to your vegetables and let that marinate and stuff inside of the juice with the seafood boil and add extra citrus on top of that to let it all like get steamy and, you know, rise to the top and add a good amount of water into the pan. And like, you know, like giving them just a random recipe, bro. I don't know these people, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't know the fuck they are. I just know how to cook. And I was like, huh. You know what? Something that'd be really good for y'all is if y'all did it this way. And they was like, hey, bro, that's actually a good ass idea. That sounds yeah. really fire. I'm like, yeah. trust me, bro. And just, hey, like, I'm over here like, so that, fire back. like <laughs> hey, bro, d hey, do that. I'm going veganize shit. it. Nah, for real. Do I'm it. Do it, though. That'd be good. If you like, <laughs> I got to. If you like, if you like, veganized it and made like potatoes, corn, and like shit, I don't know. I can find some tofu. Like some, uh, yeah, some, some, some tofu or some tempeh or something, bro. Like Type some shit. goddamn, you know. Mm -hmm. Get some yeah, vegan bro, shrimp. That'd be fire. There's actually, I found Real. this lady, this lady who's a, um, she has her own business, her own vegan business. I guess she's a vegan chef, if that's the case, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but she lives in Orlando, but she okay. sells, she sells like meals. You can order it. And when, uh, back on Thanksgiving, I ordered like a bunch of food from her. I got some vegan chicken, some, Organic greens, some uh, vegan Holy mac fuck. and cheese, some uh, some sweet uh, candy yams, some vegan cornbread, like bro, some vegan steak strips, like vegan shrimp. Bro, and, it, and it slapped like regular. Bro, it slapped. I was yeah. bashing on like, hey, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put my, uh, I'm gonna have to show you my picture. I tweeted it out back on Thanksgiving, but nah, just please, slapped. bro, yeah. please, bro. Bro, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning the vegan meals, and I'm, I'm getting good at it. I ain't gonna lie, cause like I'm not sure. a, uh, I'm not a slouch in the kitchen by any means, but cooking this vegan food is no, different. Thought. Cooking all these plants, I'm, I'm like, all right, hold on, what is this? And like, certain yeah, shit, like, gotta I, gotta be, I, gotta, I gotta relearn. So like, gotta be a bit more careful with plants and such. Definitely, yeah. but it's what it cooks. Everything cooks way faster. Facts. And everything that's cooks what way I faster though. That. That's one of the, uh, that's one of the things I have noticed. Like I used yeah. to when I first started, I was overcooking a lot of food. Yeah, man. I yeah, me too, bro. A lot, and I was, I was like, hold on, I was wait, let burning me. shit. I was burning shit and putting a bunch of salt on this shit. And I'm thinking, oh man, it's healthy because it's green. And I'm like, nah, boss. Like your dinner gotta like not cook it too super duper hard. You mm -hmm. gotta fucking throw it in there, warm it up. But somebody was telling me like, about you know, some kale chips yesterday. So I'm gonna try to make those. That sounds yeah. fire. Those are fire. Those are fire. I ain't bro. never had especially none. if you see, like, bro, yeah. kale. Your choice of oil, I would, I personally prefer to cook in coconut oil, avocado oil, or sunflower oil. Sunflower yeah. oil is my favorite. So I'll be using um, grapeseed or uh, or avocado because the sunflower oil is apparently not alkaline or not or like. Oh really? Apparently not. I don't know. That's what I have seen on this huh. uh, this chart I got. That uh, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check that out too because like I'm trying to definitely. Oil. I'm trying to definitely get my body on point, so like I'll check that out too because like I I don't I love grapeseed like just generally. So I love that shit like off the rip. But yeah, bro. Um man, so just to stay on topic and stuff, because I know like you're probably not about to upload a three hour interview and shit, but no, I'm like, uploading all this shit. Um 
Oh, bro, yeah. Okay, you're a real one. Then. Yeah, I'm going to put all this shit. School. Yeah, we raw. You know what I'm saying? Niggas going to have to tune in. <laughs> real talk. <laughs> I appreciate that. So this quarantine, um, we got we giving them content. No, nah, real talk. Niggas yeah. can just sit there. And this is, I yeah. feel like this is a good, this is a good insight onto onto your process because you gave credit to me for this being a full circle interview. But honestly, I based everything off of your content, so that's really owed to you and what you created in your project. I appreciate that a lot, brother. Uh, you know, I I don't know. I try to I try to be mindful. Like I say, I just try to be mindful of the energy that I'm conveying bro, and like you know how that feels for everybody else. And okay. more importantly, though. I think about how it feels for me. So, you know, what does it make me feel? All right, let's put the vibe out there, see how they feel about it. They like it, they like it. They don't like it, they don't like it. You know what I mean? Very... Do you have, like, people you play it for to, like, see who fucks with it? To, like, uh, advice from? Ooh, nigga. Bro, I would not be who I am if I didn't do that, personally. Okay. I Before I drop anything, and I mean anything, bro, I literally make sure that I get the input of my homies, bro. Like, I make sure I get the input of people that I respect on a musical level, even if they're fellow artists or if they're not fellow artists and they're just like, you know, fellow people that I fuck with and like know my music and know how I sound and know how I like to sound. Like I get my opinion from them and I'm like, okay, what, what, like shit, when I was making the, the project, bro, when I was making the Harrowing EP, bro, like I, I literally was like telling people, man, I like these songs, but, like, I don't know how to sequence them. Where should these go? And then we started listening back to the records and shit and really, really listening to them. And I'm just like, oh, this is obviously track one. This is obviously two. This has big track three energy. You know what I mean? This feels like a good after track three because track three is so powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, track five is, like, almost like an interlude of sorts for real, for real. Because if you consider it, bro, Track five and track two are opposites of each other, and neither of them have hooks on. Them. You know what I mean? Because if you think, if you look at, if you look at the sequence of my album, bro, all the songs that have hooks on them are the first and the last song, the third and the fourth song, but the second and the fifth song do not have hooks. It's a piece. It's like it's like an A side, okay, B okay, side okay, project okay. inside of itself. You I see what you're I mean? saying. Yeah, it's kind of like this. Yeah. Yeah, like this with exactly. energy in the middle, type shit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I can Thank see that. You. See, and it's crazy because my project, I don't, I don't have many hooks either. That's, That's honestly where I struggle the most in creating music. Oh, uh, hooks, bro. Yeah, because like I'm not like the type to, I'm not really the type to repeat myself. So it's like I didn't say what I said on the verse. If somebody else want to come I in and lay it. a hook down, like go ahead. I dig like, that. A big thing about heroes have gotten. We gotten it pretty down in a way to make to make songs, cause like, yeah, something I'm gonna say here. That I don't think nobody knows yet. Is me and Two actually working on an album together? But um, oh really? Yeah. So we'll see. Um, so we kind of got it down on how to make songs, like without me, without that being my strong point. But uh, so okay, it's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, and I mean that's not bad at all. Shit, Earl did that, bro. Earl wasn't making hooks at first. Like he was just fucking rapping for like two and a half minutes and just would stop. Would yeah, I mean, shit. You know I mean? Cause I'm saying, nigga, I'll rap for 64 bars and then like, all right, I don't got a chorus. <laughs> like, bro, Lupe Fiasco <laughs> did it for eight minutes straight, bro. That was like 300 like bars, bars. And I just like, I like like two things. Yeah, bro. Like, and I, I promise, like, I don't lie in the booth. That's why I really fuck with truth. Like when you said, like, is that really you in the boo? I'm like, all right, yeah. Cause niggas be capping like a motherfucker. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah, Who is this nigga? I know you. Like, come on, bro. Exactly. I know me, bro. Come on, bro. Why am I being somebody else? Let me be me. Mm. Let me talk about this shit, bro. Who, who the fuck? That's like what bro, there wasn't said. Many he said niggas be stressed because they lying. He said, this shit easy. Niggas be in the studio stressed because they lying. Bro, you. <laughs> Thinking so hard about what to drop, bro, because you're not talking about your real life. You're not talking about real life, bro. You real life comes. Um, you don't even feel so this. Why do I need to think hard? You know what I mean? Why do I got to think hard about some shit that really happened? Why, do I, why am I putting more thought than necessary into just recalling and reminiscing about a moment in my life that actually happened? Or like yeah. something that I was actually going through. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't hard to fucking write the second verse for truth, bro. Shit, the first verse even. You know what I mean? Just... Fucking 
See, the 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 my favorite stanza in truth, to be honest, bro, was uh the dumb as hell from time to time and kind of reckless. Respect the hero, view the villain for perspective. I done some dirt like everybody can't regret it though. I go to work, I can't be lazy, that's pathetic. I can admit that all this shit's a bit more hectic than expected. Wasted checks and chasing hoes who only fuck me for the credit. I probably max out on my American Express to put abroad in my horizon, so I only use a debit. You know what I mean? Like every part of that stanza was facts, my nigga. Like I do stupid ass shit behind a hoe sometimes, bro. And I didn't fuck my bread up trying to impress a bitch several times, my nigga. Like it'd be like that. fucking <laughs> You know, facts, bro. Especially when you love her, bro. You know, you actually like fuck with her and shit. Like, yeah, I don't fuck when you young. my money. I'm thinking about, hey, I don't want to get the damn credit card because I maxed that bitch out trying to impress Shorty Stupid. Ass. She won't even talk <laughs> like, to me. Yeah, like, I'll be dangerous you know here. You like, give me that motherfucker. Like, nah, for real, bro. I'll yeah. be out here motherfucking, oh, what you want? Roof Chris? Cool. I can afford that. Like, just, hey, bro. Like, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to move stupid behind women. So I made that record just to like let people know where I was at with it. I was like, man, this is how I'm all twenty seventeen. Just and to move uh to move beyond truth, like as a last topic, that's kind of why I have a beef with like the industry and the label side of music is because they always mm-hmm. wanna like see what connects and like goes and what's gonna hit and what's gonna sell. But it's like if an artist is creating a music and it connects with them. Because we are real people and expressive people on the most vulnerable level when creating that type of art. It's definitely going to connect with other people. That's when, I feel like that's when we get a bunch of inau- uh, like unauthentic, unauthentic, inauthentic, fake-ass music when <laughs> niggas are out here, when <laughs> niggas are out here trying to, uh, oh, God. yeah, like, oh, you're trying to sugarcoat it no more. Just fake-ass music when niggas out here trying to find <laughs> something that, like, that, like, it's yeah. going to say or it's going to hit because it's like you're not even like you don't even connect with it. That's why you don't know if it's going to connect with the people. Yeah, bro. So it's like, I just and want you to like it, um, talk about like you as an artist and yourself, because like you said, most of it goes off the feeling you have with your music versus operating in a world where that is a thing. Mm-hmm. Man, it's simple, bro, bro. Like that's that's the sentence. Like it's simple. Bro, it's very simple to talk about what I'm going through. You know what I mean? Instead of fucking talking about somebody else's like cause a lot of people like to do this bullshit where they'll be like, Oh, I'm just a rapper, I'm just a storyteller, I'm telling somebody else's story. Nigga, for what? For fucking what? We don't wanna hear that, bro. We don't wanna hear falsified stories about a fucking weird event that you can like think of off the top of your head that ends in somebody getting shot and all this other shit. Like you don't even live that kind of life. We don't want to hear that, bro. You fucked this bitch, you and then what? Fucking... Like, now what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you fucked his hoe, and then what, bro? You got some bands, and then what, bro? You did. You sit lean, and then what? My nigga, like, did you enjoy yourself, or did you fucking throw up and shit everywhere like most people do when they drink codeine, bro? Like, oh, gee, like, keep it real. What are you going through, bro? Like, do you like popping Percocets, or are you fucking depressed and need a therapy session? Nigga, like, talk about that shit, my nigga, because when you get it off, that's what makes people really your fans. That's why people fuck with Future, because in the midst of him doing his trap nigga shit where he talking about popping pills and sipping lean back when he was all fucked up and broken shit, he goes back to saying, hey, dog, I was doing this shit because, like, I lost my close friends and my bitch cheated on me. I lost a bunch of money and fucked the bag up. You know what I mean? Like, he tells people that and lets people know, like, all this shit is inspired by this shit. Like, I wouldn't get none of that over here if that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, back when he was saying shit, like, when he had that one suspect-ass lyric where people thought he was talking about he only feels alive when he tastes it. Mm-hmm. Like, when it, people thought he was saying he only feels alive when he takes dick. Mm-hmm. Like, he's talking about, like, pills and shit, bro. And, like, it was fucked up because people thought he was being funny and shit, but it was like, nah, bro, he was talking about life sucks when I am not on these pills, bro. Yeah, it's kind of like, like a flip of, uh, like a flip of, I feel like dying. Yeah, bro. Man, shit, facts, man. Well, I ain't fucking told plenty of people, dog. Like, I don't know. I almost killed myself when I was a child, bro. I've been not wanting to be here. So. Exactly. And, like, like people here. gloss over that. Yeah, bro. People just be like, oh, it's Lil Wayne. He's but honestly, weird. that's because he glossed over it at a point. But I, that just comes from not being ready to, like, be at terms with it. Mm-hmm. He went around, bro. Yeah. He didn't go through it. He yeah. around it. He found Bird Birdman found him and helped him go around it. 
didn't go through at all. Like, he didn't have to, but that cost him a bunch of shit, bro. It's always the monkey's paw when you're doing the inorganic route. Because you could talk about being in the streets and shit, and that's fine. As long as you also talk about how that is not 100% your life. That is not everything that you're going through. That is not the only thing that's happening in your life and shit mm-hmm. like that. Like, and that was a point in your life. That's country. not current, too. Yeah, bro, facts. Like, that's why I, that's why I fuck with Benny, bro, because, like, the day Benny the Butcher dropped Burden of Proof and I sat and listened to the album, I was like, oh, he even included a track where he's, like, talking about the disgusting part about the streets where, like, you finna be broke a lot and you finna stink and you finna not be taking baths because you on the corner trying to hustle, trying to feed your kids and shit. Like, damn, bro, and everybody in the game always talking about I just flipped four birds and, you know, mm-hmm. came up on a quick I lick. Got I got money, nigga. We got chains on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man. Benny went out his way nigga to said, when about, I walk, my chains make the sound my fork used to make. And I'm like, oh, like, like, that's just like, just, it lets you know both sides of it, literally. Like, just in that line glam- right there. You can't just glamorize it. You can't yeah. only glamorize life. And that's the thing, bro. Only glamorizing life is what does makes that inauthentic shit. You know what I mean? People always talking about oh, bro, why don't you make happier music? Like, honest to God, like, tying it back to me, bro. Like, I have had so many fucking people literally hit me and say, bro, why don't you make happier music? I feel like you would do better if you made, like, brighter vibes. And I'm just like, I don't make happy music because I'm not a happy nigga, bro. Like, I'm not happy. Talk about what's real. I'm just having fun over here, like. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm expressing myself and getting these, getting the energy off my heart, bro. Because it hurts. If anything, bro, I'm not happy, fam. I'm, just, I just got a lot of energy. You know what I mean? And it's been energy that's been like for the better portion of my life misplaced. Now that I have a place to put it and I can articulate my story, people listen to it now and they're just like, "Damn, bro, you make a lot more sense." And I'm like, "I, I told you. You know what I mean?" And it wasn't a fucking act. That's the biggest part, bro, because when you sit down and have a conversation with me about my life and what it's been like, my nigga, you wouldn't know that I was getting you know what I'm You wouldn't know that if unless we start, well, unless we sit and like discuss that, you wouldn't know that, that shit was happening when I was a child. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't know that I started doing drugs when I was like 13, 14, my nigga. Like, you wouldn't know that about me, bro. Like, I I, I was I was in it, bro. You know what I mean? Not to the extent where I'm hitting licks on niggas and shooting no damn body and watching my best friend get gunned down in the street and no shit. I was good enough to stay away from that, but I wasn't good enough to not have any of that shit influence me on any level. So, you know, walking around like... Everybody dabbles some kind of way. Hey, bro, everybody. Everybody, bro. You like, like you said, like we said earlier, like, you don't know until you know. So, Mm -hmm. just... I think I said something about that recently. Like, uh, humans got to get burnt to know that fire hot. Real talk, bro. Because our nervous system doesn't come equipped with the intricacies that regular animals do where they're able to feel heat signatures and that's like a part of their genetic code. You know what I mean? Like, they can feel the heat signature of a motherfucker that's like 10, 15 feet away from them. You know what I mean? And they get to see in thermal vision and shit and be able to like peep a motherfucker that's like we miles actually, away. Yeah, we gotta come in contact I mean, like, we gotta, to process it. We we process shit through contact. We mm-hmm. process oh, things through feeling. You know what I mean? And you know, we have to feel pain to understand what hurts. Mm-hmm. And that sometimes includes shit that we do to people. Which yeah. is shitty. And to ourselves. But, yeah, facts. And to ourselves, bro. Like we we got to deal with that shit and feel it and process it and be like, damn, I don't want to feel like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to feel that anymore. So why, how do I deal with that? My medium happened to be hip hop, bro. I, I make records like Truth and Corona and really shit all of my lyrics, bro. Cause I can really tie back situations that I'm rapping about in every single one of my songs. You know what I mean? Like, That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Yeah, bro, like a whole like moment in my life. Can like Curse he wants to every Curse he wants said he raps yeah. about yesterday. Or last well, night. Shit. So it's like it's like that's re- actually do. That's real. That's real, bro. When you when you put that type of vibe out and you like let motherfuckers know like this is really what's going on. And you turn it into a beautiful song, like not just life sucks right now. Let me motherfucking be sad and like grovel over it mm-hmm. instrumental. Like, no, like, <laughs> turn it into a goddamn we finna be okay type song. You know what I mean? Like, I'm finna bounce back. I'm finna be cool. I'm finna figure it out. But damn it, it hurts right now. Like, that's why I fuck with Jid, bro. 
because Jid makes that kind of music. Like, I fuck with Jid too. He fucking makes music that is very like, damn it, I was broke, my nigga. I'm talking. Jid and Benny, like my favorite two new artists. Yeah, bro. He's insane, mm-hmm. bro. He's fucking crazy. Um, him and Smino have a place in my heart right now. Like personally, I want Jid's next album to be better than DiCaprio too. Same. It wasn't same. bad. I, you know I, what I mean, but I yep, know. That, my, yep. I know that the Never Story was better to me. Story. The Never Story oh, was better bro. to me. The Great Never debut. Story was a classic. Great debut. Yeah, bro. Your first project because you dropped as a major, my nigga. That was your first. I know you could drop something better than DiCaprio too. My nigga. Exactly. Something's in there. He's gonna go crazy. But like, exactly. you know, the point. The point standing being like, I, I, I fuck with Jid because. He lets niggas know, hey, damn it, I rap like I'm one of the goats in this bitch because I genuinely feel that way, but don't ever get it fucked up. I was rapping this good when I didn't have any fucking bread, bro. I was living in my car, never meant, you know what I mean? I wasn't sleeping on benches and shit fucked up out here, like, you know, begging people for shit, but, like, I was sleeping in the car, hitting licks on niggas and shit because I ain't had no money, because I ain't had nothing. I couldn't feed myself. My family wasn't fucking with me because I was out here fucking up, getting locked up and shit, mm-hmm. like, all kind of stuff, bro. Like, he, you know, Jid is a real motherfucker, bro. Like, I really fuck with him. Like, he, you know, shit. Uh, what was bro's name? I was about to quote somebody else. Um, shit, Absol, bro. In that new song, Who Want What with Russ, bro. Oh, he man. Said I had to en- he said, I had to enrich my sense without no money, bro. That's what I did, my nigga. I didn't know how to get bread. I was hey, never he went crazy on that. N- his niggas, it went right under the hard radar. Hard to just rap. It went under the radar. That's one of his hardest versions you ever spit, bro. He and niggas gonna niggas gonna appreciate it when it's like two, three years down the line. They gonna hear it and be like, "Yeah, he's the goat." Mm -hmm. It's gonna come back as the uh, the video gonna come back. Kendrick can't rap like that, bro. I'm sorry. I love, I love K Dot, bro. I I think that's a fair way to end it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got (laughs) to. Damn, that's crazy. You think Kenny can't rap like that? Nah. Not with that level of intricacy, no. Like Kendrick can bust the same flows. Kendrick does have metaphors, punchlines, schemes, and storytelling down pat. Yes, Ab Soul gets inside of your head. There is bro. something different he does, and I can't really you know describe. What I mean, it. like Soul, Soul gets inside of your head, and he doesn't write. Soul doesn't write, bro. Kendrick still writes, fam. Yeah. Hey, that- Kendrick once said. Don't tell a lie on me. I won't tell the truth about you. I won't tell the truth about you. And ever since I heard that, like, I was like, oh, he's a serial killer. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, dude. Like, can, he can, can he can really, really like, he can end something if he, like, like, he, I don't know, he, like, he has mercy. <laughs> there it is. That's the word, yes. bro. Kendrick's a, Kendrick's a lot more powerful than he tells people, bro. <laughs> That's what it is. He's a lot and, more powerful than he than he acts. Yeah. <laughs> but um, is, there, oh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Hmm. Really, bro, we hit a lot of really crazy topics, dog. Like we did really, really good. Like yeah, this is one of the most fun interviews I've had in a minute. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Nah, for real. Like, and I mean that shit. Like, this was like really engaging. The topics that you asked me about, like at home and I got to talk about myself. I got to talk about the really and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, I wanted to give think- people, I wanted to give people a more context-based interview and to let people know about you. Because like I said, as you put more shit out there, this is going to be something that people find and be like, oh shit, let me go peep that to see what he was talking about. Especially like as you start dropping those projects you're talking about, everything's going to make right. sense. Yeah. And I'm excited to see where life goes when we get to some points too, because I'm really just trying to get to the point where, you know, we manifest that life. Cause that's all it is, bro. I'm just building my life the way I said I was going to. But all in all, bro, I don't have much much else to say besides anybody listening, if you haven't heard it already, the ROing EP is available on all streaming services and available for purchase on Amazon Music and iTunes and Apple Music. Go get it. Go stream it on YouTube. Go buy that bitch. I appreciate y'all for listening to me. I appreciate every single one of my legitimate fans to the death of me, bro. I would not be who I am without people like y'all. Real shit. I love this hip hop thing, but it doesn't rotate unless it gets into the ears of people who appreciate it. And everybody can agree with that statement. I don't get to choose when I shine. I just do. You know what I mean? You guys get to choose that. I can be a star, but if nobody sees a star, it doesn't matter. 
and the fact that you guys help people put eyes on me is a very, very big act of gratitude. And I can appreciate it from the bottom of my heart because this shit has saved my life when I had not a single dollar in my pocket. I mean that on both of my knees. So I guess I'll end the podcast by telling everybody, including yourself, Mr. Malcolm, thank you, bro, um, for listening to me and tuning into my, my words more importantly than just my raps, bro, like really listening to what I'm saying, like hearing out is more than enough, bro, more than any dollar amount that I could ever get in my life with this rap shit, bro. That ass. Yeah, bro. You're welcome. Uh, your shit's dope. And I'm going to say the cliche, I'm so excited to see what you're going to do next. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Gonna keep checking in. Uh, with, um, yeah, and tell people where they can get you at on social media. You know, Twitter, YouTube. Oh, my God. Um, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at, at Jer, J E R, two underscores, Stokes, S T O K E S. You can find me on IG at underscore J dot Stokes underscore. And I am on TikTok under that exact same handle, underscore J dot Stokes underscore. So, yeah, get at me, y'all. I'm not a weirdo. I talk to niggas and shit. Y'all got questions about all music. I'm not weird about answering them. Like, I ain't no contract like that, I guess. Yeah, just hit me up, y'all. Um, you know, I'm accessible and shit. I'll be outside with it. All right, man. I really appreciate uh, appreciate you taking time to do this. I appreciate you for giving me a platform, fam. Oh, yeah, You're no problem. You're doing good work. Bro. Appreciate you. Be safe, man. You too, G. Appreciate you, fam. I'm living so wild and doubting my truth With greedy contempt, you will be consumed Back from the dead, my demons exhumed You only got enemies cause you lack empathy One for the pain to the dummy Forsaker Can you save us? I'm not a savior Fallen angel I just can't believe it That's inside my demons Now I'm changing with